they pond this waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. What is up everybody, welcome back. Chris from Team Aquascape, myself and the gang are going to be installing a small pond kit with all the bells and whistles to create the ultimate backyard paradise here inside of our retail store. You ready for this? Let's go. New water feature coming soon. This is the location of that pond kit. As you can see, we have about 20 foot ceilings in here and that's what we have to hang those tree alliers from. So what we did as a creative solution to our challenge of trying to hang these things inside of our retail store in an uneven surface, we went to our local rental store and rented some scaffolding. Jack, Seth, and Garrett are gonna be responsible for hanging those things. We've already went and checked all the lights, got all the electrical figured out, now we gotta hang them. That's gonna be the tricky part. look like much right now in the middle of the day but when the lights are dim in here these things look absolutely incredible and they're gonna add such a big element to the ambiance of what we're trying to create inside of this space with that small ecosystem pond to really take this space to its ultimate potential I'm so glad that we also did it first because I can't imagine all the rock and everything in the terrain in here trying to get that scaffolding up and down and trying to get these things in but I'm really really excited to see how these turn out I heard Brian's on his way I'm really excited to see what he has to think and then maybe we can get going into the next part of the project. Jeez, I haven't even gotten in the building yet. You build a couple, a couple ponds for some celebrities, do a consultation overseas, and, and uh, you got the paparazzi on me. <laughs> like, what the heck? What's going on? Oh, I know. I know what you're doing. You want me to see, oh, say no more. That's awesome. That is cool. I don't know if you guys see what I see, but that is awesome. Those are things we call trialiers. They were designed for Navy Pier Flower and Garden Show and we never got the opportunity to use them. And Chris had the idea of hanging these things and I was kind of hesitant because I didn't know how to do it, but he said he was gonna figure it out and it looks like he figured it out, but this is 100% gonna be the coolest part of this project. Chris, that's pretty cool. <laughs> you know what it screams? 
It screams Flower and Garden Show. And what I think the two of us loved so much about the Flower and Garden Show was that wow factor. Mm -hmm. Like, what the hell are those? And we would do like, what the hell is that around this corner and that corner? And so that's kind of the vibe we want for this whole space. A little but, science of what the hell Yeah, what the hell? Come the hell this way. <laughs> <laughs> those are super cool. It was so nice to have them already pre-built. Like the idea was already yeah. there. But the some of the head scratching moments were how the hell are we gonna get them up there? You know, oh, that, we talked that's about. Why I instantly I was like, let's just do a pergola because. <laughs> but I love the idea of reclaiming these things, reusing them, and what a better place to put them than our retail store. It is cool. It's like a whimsical add-on to something that. It's crazy. You know what? Because they look like when you're down here, they look super high, and it takes away from the intimate feel that you want to. But when I see you standing next to them and they're basically touching your head, right I mean, you tower over me, so it's a little different for you <laughs> but yeah up here when this patio is done yeah. it's gonna feel great and then we get so the design then had like this trellisy artwork mm -hmm. type separation I don't know what you'd call it but art panels that all the employers are gonna do you're gonna do one I'm gonna do one Christine's gonna do one Trevor's gonna do one if just Jack like, like a partition right yeah uh, but just so when we're in here you're not thinking of retail space at all I want when you walk into this space for you to feel like you're in a totally different world and already that helps getting there these art pieces will be super cool if we sell those like if Christine can sell some of her koi outdoor koi paintings that she's gonna do yeah like how much cooler is that and then when you look this way we need to really block off that section mm -hmm. over there mm -hmm and block off you know the shipping crates turtle woody's enclosure over yep. there so i think with the waterfall sitting on this side mm -hmm. over here the berm work and then some height like i really think we're going to need trees like the size of some of those sure over there to help enclose this space yeah. with a bunch of thick plantings over there you know another big full tree over here like i would love to do those norfolk pines i don't think they're going to survive that far away from the window so we'll have to talk with holly from indoor plants and uh, see what she's got that can fill that whole area you'll barely then the pond will kind of sit in this area and with all this height the part the art partitions back there the tall trees the berm the waterfall over in there it'll make this pond feel incredibly large because it's going to be a lot shoved into this space and then just enough seating so right in here we'd have this patio with like two chairs looking at the pond just like we would for anybody yeah. else's design and so when you sit down in here it feels like you're in a backyard not yeah. an office building yeah Oh, I'm so excited. I'm glad we got these up now rather than trying to do it after the fact with the patio here what and like the do? pond. Scaffolding. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, like built it all up to 16 feet or whatever. So do we own scaffolding now? No, we rented. Oh, oh. we rented. That's really cool. Yeah, I love it. To put them up after the fact would not have been possible then. So what are you thinking then for patio? I don't know. Eight by eight foot area. Just enough for the two chairs. And it maybe like just some, for some spillover, you know, so it didn't feel super claustrophobic. I'd love it to have, like if we could find those old Chicago street uh -huh. bricks, uh -huh. like give it this really aged We look. may not be able to do like the authentic Chicago ones, uh -huh. but we've got that, those Unilock pavers, the Copthorne no, ones. the Copthorne. That look like old school clay yep. pavers. Could use those. I think we've got enough square footage. We could probably talk to Joel from Illinois Brick too. Yeah. He has actual clay pavers mm. that they manufacture over there yep. and see what they have. But I'd love to give it instead of like a, a super clean like that look or, I yeah. want to give it a kind of this like distressed mm -hmm. older look like this has been here for yeah. 50 years yeah. not something we just built yeah and then we're obviously gonna have to create a staircase to somewhere. get up in here and are you thinking somewhere the layout somewhere in here shifting it one way or the other I come this way because we got to get as far away from the countertop mm -hmm. as possible yeah so like I think of the natural traffic so as somebody their eyes are gonna be drawn yep. to those I almost don't want them to see, like some of those partitions really have to block the patio. The staircase leads to something where they don't know exactly where the staircase leads to. So I think it needs to come from like over here a little bit more. Yep. So we can get either another partition gotcha. here really blocking the pond mm -hmm. and only showing the pathway up to a section of the patio. Yep. Right. And then behind the other partitions would hide the rest of the patio. I like that mystery that so, it creates. Yeah, even on a small cool. space like this, we can create mystery. Yeah. Which is gonna be nice. So yeah, I would come off this a little bit so there's never a challenge with them using that mm -hmm. space for whatever okay. they use it for. That's good that you're considering that, you know, that natural flow of traffic. 
and not pushing it one way or the other. I think what's gonna make this pond is some of the whimsical stuff. I know Jack Pazinski was even talking about adding a spillway bowl mm -hmm. into the edge of the patio yep. and dropping it in maybe over there is just like an add-on to the pond. Um, but I think what's really gonna take it to the next level is the plant material. Yeah. Like it's gonna make or break the whole thing. So I gotta get on the phone with Holly and see and, and, see, what, and see what our are. options are. I have well, no idea. Well, while you're doing that, what do you think the next step should be then? 100% this staircase? As much as I would love to just jump in there and start building the pond, I think if we do the pond first, it's gonna limit us to the creativity and the footprint mm -hmm. of the patio. I would almost, because the staircase, the way we do stairs is such an organic process. Sure. Yep. If it was just, you know, escalator stairs, mm -hmm. We could say, okay, we can measure and it's gonna take up this much space. But we like to use those natural kind of free form stairs yep. and carve boulders yep. into the brick on either side to kind of flank the stairs. And those will have to twist this way, but we won't mm -hmm. know if that's gonna end up here or back or here. Feet or something, right? Sure. Yep. So I would start with the stairs. Once the stairs are built, then we can at least mark out the patio space, know exactly where that patio is gonna sit and then where those partitions are gonna sit. Then we can come and do the pond because we're going to have to do the pond and throw all the soil up over there and everything else. I also want to do a couple different things with the plants, like some of our big plants over time. We've had to take them out and put in separate containers underneath them to help lock in some moisture mm -hmm. a little bit better. So I want to make sure we do all that stuff for the plant material so sure. they have an easier time watering them. Sure. Dude, I'm so excited. Even cooler, this was Greg's idea, right? He really wanted to create this kind of, what's the word he used? Narnaic? <laughs> Narnia. Narnia-ish. He said Narnia, you yeah. said Narnaic. <laughs> yep. Which doesn't make any sense. But no, but I love it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a new word. Mm -hmm. Webster will definitely acknowledge it. Webster, are you there? Narnaic. Narnaic. <laughs> Narnia. Narnia. I can't wait for him to come see this because the last time he saw it was the last time I saw it. And that's when there was two ponds here. And it's almost hard for me to remember like exactly what it looked like. Yeah. There was a berm over there. Yep. That berm shared two waterfalls, a waterfall falling into this pond and a waterfall falling into the other pond. Mm -hmm. And we're basically gonna build almost the exact same size pond, yep. but make it look a thousand times better. Yeah, excited. Me too. Well, I think next step is uh, rip this out and line up where you want those stairs. Yep. It's probably frame rock first, then swing your stairs in and then figure out how yep. these bricks come in. Yeah. Okay, so we are getting ready to start the steps going into our ultimate eight by 11 backyard pond. We just talked about kind of how we were gonna lay out the steps as they come in. We weren't going to get too close to this boulder here. We're actually gonna shift the entrance from maybe here to there coming in so that you kind of step up, it turns and then leads you up to the upper patio, which will sit up in this area here. Waterfall back over there, pond coming right up next to the patio. A ton of plants over here. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and protect the floor like we normally do in here, lay some mats down, and then I want to go ahead and start tearing into this wall after we get the sand peeled back, of course. So we'll get the site prepped and then start moving the sand back and then we'll dig into breaking open this wall here. And then we will sit our signature boulders that will frame out the steps and give them that direction going up to the patio as well. So that'll be a really fun process. Love it when we can do steps because we do it so much differently than so many people that we see out there. They do kind of the concentric staircase. We really want to create that movement and using some of those frame rocks, as we call them, to really dictate which way the next step is going to go. Floor protection's down. Now it's time to start moving this sand. We're just going to throw it up over into there and then we'll break apart this wall. we are we are almost done kind of ripping open this wall we're gonna pull a few more out here and then go ahead and get these rocks in that'll kind of frame out the steps So we've got the bottom two steps in now. Now we're gonna come in with probably our last step, put a four foot level over here and kind of see where we're at height wise. We are cruising right along. We've got a few more rocks. We got one more rock that we probably have to add over there. We're gonna bring another one out just on the other side of this and then we'll bring the wall in back behind it. So we'll 
fill this gap in with a stone and then we'll bring that wall in back behind and then there will eventually be a post sitting right in here that will start our partition wall that's going to kind of funnel everything off so that when you're sitting on the patio located up in here, you don't even realize that the rest of the retail store and the employee entrance, bathrooms, all that stuff is back behind you. So we really want to enclose this space. It's going to be so awesome.